Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Raymond Dirty, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Sonic Mania. And welcome to the first original zone of the game, Studiopolis Zone. There are tons of references to other Sega games, and there are tons of references to the developers as well, actually, of this game. I'll just go through a few of them. That pink bot sign we just passed, reference to Streets of Rage. There's also references to other series like Daytona USA, which I'll go over when we get to them. But I just want to say something about this. Sonic Mania likely wouldn't have been made if it weren't for this zone in particular. Because Studiopolis was actually the first zone designed by the development team. Christian Whitehead, Head Cannon, also known as Simon Tomley, and Pagoda West Games, which includes uh, T-Lopes. And uh, yeah, basically what happened was they pitched this level. What Back when the game is called Sonic Discovery, you can actually see their names there. CWHC. PWG, which is Christian Whitehead, Headcanon, Pagoda West Games. Uh, yeah, basically they pitched the game back when it was called Sonic Discovery with this level. And how what happened was they pitched it directly to Takashi Izuka, who's the head of Sonic Team. And he, after he saw what they'd made, that he was like, I have many questions. And then they had to break for lunch. After they got back from lunch, uh, Takashi Izuka, he got out a whiteboard and a marker, he wrote down Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Sonic and Knuckles, and Sonic Mania, which confirmed that Sega had picked up the game, which led to it being released to massive critical and user acclaim. Honestly, I prefer to look at user reviews rather than critical reviews, because the user reviews in this game are like are basically all universally positive. <laughs> Which I honestly agree with. This game is fantastic. Honestly, it's just amazing. And without this zone, it wouldn't have been made. Speaking of studio of the name, oh, speaking of Studiopolis, it almost had a different name. It was almost called Opening Night Zone or Fame Plaza Zone because Studiopolis is actually the name of the English recording studio that records the uh, modern Sonic games in LA. Like they've recorded every single one I think since Sonic Colors. Which actually got referenced earlier in this level with that that sign that was saying great, outstanding, amazing. It's that good, great, awesome, outstanding, amazing. And uh, we just went past a bunch of other references. That TV there that we burst out of earlier had the Game Gear logo on it. Uh, the truck had Hornet on it, which is a reference to Daytona USA. Club Spin, Ages, that's actually a reference to two things. One is the Club Sega arcades in Japan, and the other is the old U UK uh, Sega slogan, which was, To be this good takes ages. That sign we just passed there that said, to Buy the Mania for the Mania, which is the official tagline of this game. Um, there's just so much more as well. Like there are so many references to other Sega things in this level. It's it's honestly incredible. But like speaking of Studio Plus, as I was saying, like it shares the name with that, and the developers proposed a couple different names. Opening Night Zone and Fame Plaza were two of the suggestions. But Studio Plus were like, you know what? We'll let you use it because it is nice. It is a good name. And now the dev team views it as a nice little reference to the modern Sonic games. So, yeah, there's that TV with the Game Gear logo again, Pink Bot, a Streets of Rage reference. Uh, there's also references to the Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop, which was a Japanese exclusive uh, arcade machine slash popcorn vendor, which allowed you to play a little mini game while your popcorn was being done. Uh, which, like, it's kind of strange. The reason it was called Sega Sonic is because in Japan for a while, Sega couldn't get the exclusive rights to the name Sonic, so they went with Sega Sonic to, like, be theirs. They used it for Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, the arcade game, the Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop, Sega Sonic uh, Cosmic Patrol, or whatever, like, and a couple other arcade games. Now, we're already at the boss, and this is the Heavy Gunner, the first of the hard-boiled heavies that we're fighting throughout the game. Uh, he mainly uses missiles to attack, and he is accompanied by several Egg Robos, which probably means that he is a police officer. Uh, yeah, they've all got the tons here. Oh god, I'm out of rings. Oh dear, this is not good. Yeah, this boss fight 
in a way, it's similar to both the first mini boss from Sonic and Knuckles, from the Sonic and Knuckles, like the Mushroom Hills boss. The one with the actual, or actually, no, the second act one where you have to chase Eggman. But this is also similar to the boss fights in Sonic Advance 2, which were all like this. Yeah, so there were like plenty of Eggman ref. The yeah, Eggnog, which is Dr. Eggman. <laughs> Yeah, oh, this level has just so much going on and I really love it. I'm actually, I just have to say something about Sonic Mania overall. It's been my favourite game to play, out like in my Let's Plays. It's the only one outside of my Let's Plays that I've actually played without recording. Like, I've just played it casually, like outside of my recording sessions. And, like, that's never happened before. Never happened with GTA 3, even though that was brilliant. Never happened with Ape Escape 2. Never happened with COD 4, because of how narrative-focused that was. I wouldn't have been able to uh, play it without recording. So, wait, just gotta bump into this. Yes, I'm gonna take down the heavy gunner, and... Fuck, I died right before it was gonna hit him. Oh, my God, I can't believe I screwed that up. And, yeah, I just have to say the thing about the music. T-Lopes. Oh, he is such a legend with these these songs. My God, he he's so good. I don't know like how like he got he wasn't even like originally a professional music guy in terms of video games. He used to do fan remixes of Sonic songs on YouTube and other video game songs, and I think he still does to this day, while also doing other projects for Pagoda West and. Uh, Oh yeah, this boss team is actually pretty good as well. The heavy gunner is not going to be the uh, the last of the hard boiled heavies, as you saw at the start of Green Hill Zone and the end of Green Hill Zone. He's just one of five of these guys. There's also the heavy Shinobi, heavy Mystic, the heavy Rider, and the heavy King in that order. We will be fighting them like a little like later on down the road. We'll be f so. Just gotta keep jumping over the missiles, make sure I don't lose rings. You hit the blue ones, not the red ones, because the blue ones are the ones you're meant to hit. And those egg robots around him, they're actually his health bar, believe it or not. Pretty inventive use of those guys. And now we're just down to Heavy Gunner on his own in his helicopter. Or I think it's a modified looking Egomatic. So, we're almost, I'm, I've almost taken down the Heavy Gunner. And roll into this, and yes, I've done it. Yeah. Oh, yes. So sorry it, it took so long for me to beat Act 1 of Studiopolis Zone. I was just trying to look for the last special ring. I'm try I still am, because I need to get that last Chaos Emerald to turn into Supersonic and eventually get a bunch of other rewards. Right, I got through Act 1, and now on to Act 2. Yeah, and the music is still really good here. Oh, wow. You, I, I recommend you just go onto YouTube and take a listen to the Sonic Mania soundtrack. It's just excellent. If you go up here, you get an extra life at the start of this act, and Tails isn't being very responsive. And Okay, right, just gotta go up. Uh, I think I just gotta go try, go up here. Um... Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually going to have a lot more time to make these videos and refine them now because of a few things. First of all, I'm getting done with a lot of college work. Second of, Secondly, I'm also, uh, I've also got myself OBS uh, Studio on my computer, which will allow me to record my face, uh, which is going to be something new because, like, uh, before then, I never knew how to record my webcam, but now I actually have a way of not just recording stuff from my webcam, but also gameplay footage. Like, that's good, so... I'm still gonna wait to get a new keyboard for my computer until I record gameplay from my PC, because... Well, the wireless keyboard I have is not good enough, like... Like, it just won't... Like, keep, it just won't... It just barely responds when I even try to play something simple like Team Fortress 2 and all that. Uh, so, uh, just gotta keep going here. Basically, I'm, I'm just trying to get the emerald. It's just so hard trying to find the emerald, the special rings in zones you don't know. Because, you know, like with Green Hill and Chemical Plant, I had a rough idea where they were because of the fact that they were reused levels. But this is not. This is an original zone made for Sonic Mania. And it was, in fact, the first zone they made. 
and the whole thing of reusing zones was actually implemented later by Takashi Izuka during development. He was the one who go, ah, oh, you should re-implement, you should re-implement all levels. And uh, yeah, that means that out of all of the 12 zones in this game, yeah, there are 12. Four, uh, five, or 13 technically, five of them are new, including the final boss. Which I'm gonna cover when I get to it. So I'm just gotta jump up here, head up onto this upper path, head over here. Here's a good trick to do if you're at the bottom of a loop and you jump, you automatically go to the top. Now I just gotta roll down into here and see what's there. Yes, I made it! The last special ring. That means the last special stage. And it's full of cubes. Hooray, cubes. Now just gotta keep jumping. This is actually a very straight level. The theoretically, I could go, like, straight most of the time, and I could catch the thing. Well, except not right now, because I'm in Mach 1, and I don't have enough rings. But Oh, wait, no, I'm in Mach 2 right now, which is good. Uh, I'm going to try and catch it. Uh, jumping around corners is highly recommended here. And Wow, shit's getting trippier. Like, there's fish and trees and pillars hanging off of the level geometry. And... Like, it really is. And there's birds as well flying in place. And yeah, this is. These special stages are like the ones from Sonic CD and Sonic 1 because of them being trippy. And also, like, the models are like the Saturn games, like Sonic Jab and Sonic R. Uh, okay, I've almost caught the Red Emerald, which will be the last one. And once I get it. Once I get it, you will see one of the rewards I get from actually having this final Chaos Emerald. I have a minute to catch it, pretty much. And I'm gonna catch it. Yes! I've done it! Alright! Yes! Sonic got all the Chaos Emeralds. All seven of them. Yeah! I've just got a bunch of points as well. Now you're gonna see one of the rewards. Now Sonic can be Super Sonic! Yeah! Right, just gotta load back in. And then, basically what I have to do is collect 50 rings and hit the triangle button. And then I transform. Alright, so I just gotta hit that checkpoint and go down the hill. As you can see, the, tri the S icon is there with the triangle button now. All I have to do is, oh, not lose my rings. Now I'm gonna have to get them all back. Ah, oh, that sucks. Uh, better go up here and damn it. Oh, oh god, I'm being sent all over the place. Oh my god, that was, that was crazy, boy. Oh, that was crazy. Go, go up here. Uh, oh, wow, yeah. Okay. Ooh, going all around, heading up this roll of film, bouncing up here, going down this chute. Oh my god, there is so much going on in this level. Uh, there's these bouncy things, these microphones. Uh, I should be able to get all my rings back. There's plenty of rings, actually. Jeez, there's so many just in these wheels and all of them. Oh, okay, just gotta hit these mics when they're not... Uh, full of lightning. Okay, just gotta keep going down and oh wow, I'm going Gotta go fast as they say uh, Okay, just gotta oh god get in this ring of springs uh, It's hard getting in one of these or, and then once you do get in it's easy to get out By and by the get out. I mean get bounced out and, oh, oh, uh, uh, oh dear oh, oh. I am going to need Tails to get up here. Hold on. Oh, damn it. I accidentally used the drop dash. Uh, hold on. Yes. I'm going to get up to that checkpoint. And, yeah. Sorry. Oh, what? Oh, here we go. And, yeah. That's an example of how the physics can really, really work in this game. Now, i just got to go down this chute into this little slot machine here. And I think once I do stuff here, I get a bunch of rings. Uh... I'll just keep rolling to see what I get. I get seven, 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 uh, one time. So I think, yeah, 21 rings in total. And then I go down here and get a normal shield, which is, I believe, the first time I have, I've had it. Then I go down this sh this uh, funnel. I, I just realized that they're funnels. Then I get zapped into this big tunnel that I go fast in, go down here, get enough, get loads of rings, get an extra life. And then oh, I just keep zipping all over the place. And, yeah, that's supersonic. Yeah, and I'm at the boss. And here's what supersonic can do to bosses: he can absolutely fucking destroy them. I didn't even get to the first phase of the boss, and he's already dead. 
that buzzing, by the way, you're hearing, is actually from the Sonic 25th Anniversary livestream that Sonic Mania was announced at. Like, it was all over the live stream, and it was pretty bad. Thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to me on YouTube, Twitch, and subscribe star. Follow, this, uh, follow me uh, on Twitch. Uh, hit the notification button. Like, share, comment. Do all that. Thank you all so much for watching this video.